we're not quite done with the cerebral cortex yet. There are still some structures in the cerebral cortex that I want you to know. First of all, you have Broca's area and Wernicke's area. These are some of the speech centers in the human brain. I've put a big B in the frontal lobe of this brain and that is showing you Broca's area where it's located. Broca's area is one of the speech centers. If there's damage to Broca's area, maybe through an accident or a stroke, then the individual is still able to comprehend speech and to produce meaningful speech, but it will be stilted, leaving out many of the little words like A and V. It will not be fluent, but the individual would still be able to follow instructions. If I ask the individual, please put this book on the table, they will comprehend what I'm saying and they would be able to do it. In contrast, damage to Wernicke's area, another of the speech centers, is more serious. I've drawn a W in the temporal lobe of this individual's brain showing you Wernicke's area. If there's damage to Wernicke's area, then the individual is no longer able to comprehend speech. They may produce sounds that seem fluent, but they're not actually meaningful. And when I ask someone who has damage to Wernicke's area to please put this book on the table, they would not be able to comprehend what I'm saying. Understanding how the brain allows us to produce speech is more complicated, but these are the two speech centers that I absolutely want you to know, Broca's and Wernicke's areas. I also want you to know that these structures, these speech centers, are located in the left hemisphere of most right-handed individuals. This startles many students when I talk about it in class. When you're right-handed, your speech centers are very likely to be in the left hemisphere of your brain. And I always get questions about, well, what happens if you are left-handed? And the answer is that the speech centers could be in your right hemisphere or the functioning of the speech centers could be provided by both hemispheres, not just one or the other. Another interesting piece of information about this is that if you are right-handed and your speech centers are in your left hemisphere, there are comparable structures in your right hemisphere that are not important for understanding speech, but they do let you interpret sounds. They help you to recognize the sound of a door opening or closing or footsteps walking across the floor, just non-speech sounds. Finally, we need to talk about the association areas. These are the parts of the cerebral cortex that we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> Basically, it's everything else in the cerebral cortex. And people have wondered about the functions of the association areas for many years. And here's the best explanation that I can give. If you are experiencing the world around you, you're going to experience it through multiple sensory modalities, hearing, taste, touch, odor, etc. You're going to experience different objects in your environment in a unified fashion. Imagine that I am standing in a room and holding an onion and I can feel the onion in my hands. If it has been cut, I can smell the onion. I can feel tears running down my cheeks because I respond very sensitively to the smell of onions. If I were to drop the onion, I'd hear it thud on the floor. So I'm basically experiencing this onion through all my different sensory modalities. Surely there are parts of the cerebral cortex that are receiving input from these different sensory modalities and integrating them and making sense of them so that I have this unified experience of an onion. It's pretty speculative, however, but if you think about it, these are parts of the human brain where if you were to stimulate them during a brain surgery, nothing happens and damage to them does not necessarily result in any obvious behavioral change. So we call these areas association areas, and the idea is that they allow associations between different types of stimuli.